Hello, this is Franz Cantor back again. I'm doing another caricature. <laughs> what else is new? Okay, so uh, I just thought, you know, today is a little bit of a special day because everybody's feeling a bit gloomy down here in Melbourne. It's a bit of a overcast, rainy, cold um, uh, start to winter. And um, even though we're in, in, supposed to be in autumn. <clears throat> um, so today, I thought what we might do is... Um, we we'll experiment with... Uh, I've just been sort of experimenting with his uh, face. I thought I might do one of the goons. I thought I might do this guy here. And, of course, that's Spike Milligan, right? So one of the three people who are responsible for a lot of humour and, and, and making people feel good. Peter Sellers, of course, and... Um, and uh, Oh, gosh, I've forgotten the other goon. But the... Um, <laughs> Just you might like to leave that in the comments so I can sort of profusely apologize. Um, Spike Milligan is uh, uh, best known, of course, for his very, very surreal sense of humor. There's a lot of surreal humor, isn't there, in British comedy? You know, with uh, we, I did John Cleese uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we're talking about that. But um, <clears throat> um, Spike Milligan is a very, very interesting guy. I mean, how's that for a picture? It's like, uh, it's, it's a very um, uh, surreal uh, uh, expose of his style of humour. His visual, physical, um, musical and literal humour, so literary humour. So he's all kind of unexpected. Uh, you, you expect the unexpected with Spike Milligan. And that's, that's what I liked about him and I think most people find that endearing. He has a, an acute <clears throat> attention to detail for characters. And even then, we'll put his own spin on it. So, you know, you could see that this, the moustache is half on, half off with, uh, with this character, Norman Potter. Um, so a lot of his characters are almost things that he can s slip into, um, almost like slippers, like he puts his little slippers on and... You know, and, and 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 off he goes. He's he's at home. So he lives in these characters. These characters that he created are uh, like slippers. They're like house slippers. They're like tennis shoes. They're, you know, something that he's that's well worn and loved and used a lot by him. So he feels very comfortable. And we we really resonate to. If you ever listen to the goons, it's just sort of a, 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 a really elastic experience. Of, of humor in many different forms, physical and, and um, you know, uh, uh, scripted and unscripted. It's, there's a whole gamut of, of experience. And it's all to do with a characterization. So what we're going to try to do today is I'm working from this photo, this reference. I'm going to try and get uh, Spike's um, iconic sort of, you know, uh, uh, stare. He's got this sort of uh, a very intense stare. Um, <laughs> I was playing around with, you know, who else but Quagmire. I was playing around with these shapes, uh, trying to get, you know, what is the overall shape of the head of uh, this uh, character that I'm seeing here? And I sort of got this kidney shape, which, you know, if you were to expand it more, it would be a, like a Quagmire sort of effect. But the, uh, of course, there's no ears. Uh, visible, They're quite flat. <clears throat> um, so, looking for shapes as an entree into the sim uh, symbol side of drawing, right? So, into the uh, the the um, the stylization. So, I look at caricature as an exercise, not just for like a likeness and balloon heads and stuff like that, and pulling faces or whatever. It is an exercise in drawing, in, in being able to read into the uh, reference, reading into the lines that you see, the references that you see, and drawing out conclusions, like making conclusions. So the whole thing together is like looking at a picture and uncovering a story, and then you know developing that story and making it your own version. 
<clears throat> so I've actually taken the time to roughly sketch up uh, an approach to the to this, the shape. It's quite what I would call fairly conservative in terms of stretching the uh, elements. But I have chosen these sort of simple shapes, which does simplify my job a little bit because I'm now con able to concentrate on the details. And the details I'm going to sort of um, exaggerate. So if you look at caricature as a process of simplification and exaggeration, um, that's a very sort of helpful uh, construct. Um, also, there is, as far as lighting is concerned, probably an overhead version, an overhead light would uh, suffice. It's kind of that means that shadows are, are very uh, much um, on the lower end of the uh, the form that it's creating. We're drawing with three color pencils: a brown pencil, a white pencil for highlights, and a black pencil. And we might be helping those along with a black brush pen. And like a Posca would be good. A white Posca, which is kind of like a, just a heavy, heavy lifting as far as contrast uh, is concerned. <clears throat> right, so um, without further ado, let's start into the, uh, into the details, the nitty gritty of the face here. As I said to you before, it's like, uh, you know, we want to really get some expression uh, into the face and you know ooh, be careful about <laughs> drawing lines the brown pencil is very forgiving by the way because you know this is kind of a warmish gray and this is a, a tonally it's very similar it's just a little bit darker than the um, than the than the brown the uh, sorry the gray paper but you can see that on a white paper it's quite strong right so we're using this as a base just to get some light and loose lines describing the shape that we want to put our details into. And the details that we're going to be focusing on, of course, are in the mask area or this T-zone. forms a sort of a T, so the eyes and the, and the nose and the mouth are our areas of focus. So when we're exaggerating forms, which we do easily with stylizing and, and uh, you know, simplifying the process, simplifying the shapes when we first read them... <clears throat> um, the, the, the details and everything are applied to the, the, the new parameters, the new where you've moved the goalposts to. That's where we need to hit our goals. We need to kick out our goals within these new goalposts. So the goalposts are, have to be relative to one another. So um, you look at in terms of proportion and uh, perspective, of course, this is face is tilted slightly, so it's favored down this axis a little bit, um, it, it, your brain will tend to straighten things up. So just be aware of that happening and uh, you, you, you'll, you'll start to feel it. Hap you'll start to feel it and uh, watch out for overcorrecting and, and um, you know, it's like your, your, your balance is slowly over time sort of correcting itself in your drawing, which is, it can be annoying. Uh, just be aware of that. Um, but our area of focus is this, this mask zone, this T-zone of the eyes, nose, and the mouth. All right? So just keep that in mind, and uh, let's, let's continue on. Now, what I'm trying to build here is a bit of uh, tone. I'm looking at the, the reference material. I'm looking at the reference and looking at the contours, right, which are the lines describing the shapes, and um, just organically feeling my way through the face in a tactile form, just trying to get the, the right sort of look, uh, feel and appropriate response with a pencil. Um, this is something that comes from experience after drawing. It sounds very weird, doesn't it? Like you're feeling a face with a pencil. But it's exactly what's happening. You're trying to find a, uh, uh, <clears throat> a simpatico, a... Um, um, uh, uh, what's the empathy? Well, empathy because I'm a human, he's a human, and I empathize with humans. But ultimately, you're trying to find a relevance that uh, rings true with regards to the uh, both the recognition of the character that it's a human first, and then secondly that it's uh, Spike Milligan, but also. There's a lot of uh, recognition in the individual forms of eyes and 
you know, um, uh, the geography of the face, if you will, right? So there's a there's a moment, there's a element of truth in all of the parts, and you know, the sum of the parts equals Spike Milligan. But the um, oh, he's got some long lashes. I have to sort of mm, that has that's unusual to have them so prominent. Um, so the the individual elements have to add up to the obviously the likeness that you're going for the recognition factor of who it is. He's got some great uh, shaggy eyebrows, which add uh, incredible character here. Uh, very very nice, very strong. I look for things that have distinctive properties, distinctive qualities. Um, it's always very handy in a caricature, of course. Well, in a portrait as well, but in a caricature, it's really fun to have the ability to, you know, um, make things bigger and other things smaller, but have a, uh, a, a entertain yourself, have a variety of uh, big and small uh, within the the um, the drawing experience. Okay. So I'm here to enjoy, in a very selfish way, a drawing experience, and I've roped you guys in. I hope you don't mind. I hope you enjoy the experience as well. If you draw, draw. Uh, you can draw along with me. But, um, you know, that would be fantastic. It would be awesome, you know, if we could sort of share an experience uh, together. It would be great. Um, I want to do some uh, classes uh, soon. And we'll be able to uh, play with that uh, concept even more. This is great, uh, having such beautiful uh, lines. You know, pencil lines describe hair so well. Oh, my gosh. It's made for that uh, fur and hair. Brilliant. So I love all of this sort of shagginess uh, quality that he's put into this, this character. Um, you know, very, very... Um, beautiful to draw it's a wonderful experience to draw so much fun isn't it um when you get a chance to play with uh shapes and textures you know because the pencil is such a magical implement look how simple it is and yet it's so profound you know and they haven't been able to filter this they haven't been able to turn this into an app it is it is something that's peculiar to the human experience drawing and um, they'll, they'll never be able to find an app for it. They'll never be able to find... Robots won't be able to paint, you know. If you can't teach a chimpanzee to paint, you'll never be able to teach a robot to paint. And, uh, and that's, that's the case because it's a very weird process. And I don't think scientists really appreciate how strange and bizarre this behavior is. You know, if there is life out there in the universe, you can be sure that they're, they're, they're not painters and they're not drawers. We are unique in this uh, respect, and uh, and I think in, enjoy that uniqueness. Embrace the uniqueness of the human spirit, the human condition, all of which is embodied in this process, which is so strange and so bizarre as uh, as drawing. And yet, you know, we judge our drawings in uh, very uh, unkind terms, don't we? We look at the drawings and say, it doesn't look like the person... It doesn't look right. Well, of course it does. Uh, it looks exactly as it's meant to be. It's, it's, a, it's a drawing. It's not a photograph. So, you know, don't judge your work harshly. Don't speak like that even. That's, that's, not, that's not nice uh, to make fun of yourself. But um, the uh, process itself of, of drawing is so unique that people, even artists themselves, become you know, very immune to the specialness of this process. You know, I mean, I even people that, that I, I grow up with uh, drawing, friends and family, they, you know, they, they sort of look at it almost in a blasé fashion. And a lot of times they, you know, will, will look at it and uh, make comments like everybody else, you know, who doesn't look like him? But the the process of drawing itself is its own reward. I know that sounds trite, doesn't it? But think of it this way. 
this is something uh, that I'm, ex I'm sharing with you, right? I'm sharing with you and I'm talking about it unscripted. I don't know if this will work. I don't know if this will be a successful caricature. Let's face it, it may not. It, it might fall flat. The likeness may not come. It may be very elusive. We don't know. I don't know, but that's part of the fun, isn't it? And uh, I love shape when I look at shapes. Uh, even things like uh, Quagmire's face, you know, I think, well, that's different. Uh, <laughs> that was on an unexpected shape, that, that face. Uh, you know, how did that come about? And, of course, the novelty of it is, the, is what makes it unique. And even if you think it's very unesthetic compared to, say, you know, a Simpsons character or all the, even, the, indeed, the other characters in uh, Family Guy, you know, Quagmire stands out, doesn't he? He and Stewie actually kind of stand out as, as being almost different uh, levels of, of design aesthetic. But I love that because, you know, vive la différence, the... Uh, uh, vive la différence. Um, the... Um, sorry, my... my <laughs> I'm not good at French. The, um, the differences, we look for differences. We look for the novel uh, in, our, in our world because it makes us feel energized it energizes us and this is what's special about uh the drawing process because you know what every time you draw you could draw him you could draw spike milligan 10 times and you get 10 different results don't you and you get 10 different artists drawing spike milligan even caricaturists and you get 10 different results and that that's remarkable that's remarkable you wouldn't get that with an app or a filter. You wouldn't get that with a camera. You wouldn't. You just wouldn't. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be possible, you know, because there's a certain level of standardization and, and um, uh, involved in the process itself. So I really, really love the, the way that pencil uh, can uh, give you an unscripted uh, reality, an unscripted life. An unscripted response to life. This is a build-up of all the things that I've learned about where I am now. Hats. I'm drawing hats. I'm wearing a hat. And uh, I like this hat. Maybe I've responded unconsciously to the fact that, ooh, I don't have this hat. Why don't I have this hat? Um, <laughs> maybe it could be something like that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm taking liberties, by the way, with the shape here. Um, diabolical liberties, I'd say. And um, I'm trying to sort of get a voluminous roundness to the top of this um, captain's hat, this Greek fisherman's hat, um, which looks like it's made of corduroy. I think it is corduroy, which is nice because that's got a nice uh, stripy texture to it like that. You can do that, you know. And then it will look more corduroyish. <laughs> is there such a word as corduroyish? Well, we've just invented a, a new word. So, uh, this is what I mean. You know, the idea of, of creating something that's simple and quick. It's a quick response to life, you know, uh, to um, the stimulus. <laughs> the stimuli that comes into my eye is very um, elusive at first, and then after several attempts, I find that it can be um, accomplished. Whatever that means. Ooh, I'm out of whack here. You can see uh, I'm not good with straight lines, am I? Um, for goodness sake, uh, get a ruler. Um, so I'm, yeah, it's probably down there. I would hazard a guess. It kind of feels like it might work. I uh, put my signature in the corner to, to as a little anchor there. Just remember when you draw, you always put your signature. It doesn't matter of the result, whether you like it or not. It's have respect for the process itself. And we're all artists, and even when we're little children, you know, it's important to, to remember that we're, 
We're on a very human journey. We're very all together, all of us. We're in the same, in the same boat. We're in, we're in a very natural process, a natural journey, and it's very unique to us. Animals don't draw. Aliens from other planets, they don't draw. You know, robots, ma machines, computers, filters, they don't draw. They do not draw. And even the so-called drawing with light machine, the camera, you know, um, they're not actual drawings. They're, they're, um, it's a process. So this is more than a process. This is like a magical experience. So he uses our cyclopean friend here. We have to de devise the other eye. We have to work out where the eye is going and uh, uh, pay uh, due respect to the um, the uh, lining up of elements uh, in respect to p perspective and uh, balance, etc., etc. So um, I just very lightly sketch out this. So I want to try to get that uh, eye in there, but there's a beautiful um, uh, effect of the lid that's half closing sort of pinching the eyeball you know this this is uh, when you draw eyes uh, outside of the experience of a head or a face you sort of focus on the elements you work you find out how much you actually know about eyes they're very um, uh, very much in our realm of expertise in terms of recognition of you know the subtleties of of eyes and and what they actually mean. You know, like uh, expressions that are, are led in part by by the eyes themselves. You know, if someone is angry or surprised or in love or or, or you know <laughs> whatever sleepy, you know, everything that we experience uh, is imparted through the through the um, the language that we can easily discern with the eye. So there's a lot of uh, messages with, uh, with the eye, a lot of um, messaging, not faster than any other, other um, form of uh, communication a lot. You know, try it yourself. You ever tried to, you ever been in a party with your partner or something and you're trying to, get a message to your partner with your eyes, you know, let's go. I hate these people. I'm sorry I came. Let's go. And, um, you know, then your partner sort of uh, uh, understands the message, right? And she understands the message that, you know, you want to go. You're sick of this. You know, <laughs> you can't handle this, this party anymore. These people are assholes. And uh, you're trying to get that message across to your partner, aren't you? And um, with varying, uh, no, it, it does succeed. But of course, she doesn't want to go because she didn't want to come in the first place, and now she's enjoying herself, and she's going to rub your nose in it, and that's how it happens. Um, so there, there you go, there you go. Uh -huh. The human experience peeled back. So is it? He's got such a, a beautiful, expressive. Uh, set of peepers, this guy. Uh, Spike Milligan I'm drawing here, if you've tuned in late. So Spike Milligan's one of the goons, of course, but he's also his own uh, uh, personality, as indeed, you know, Harry Seacombe. That's this Harry Seacombe, there you go. Harry Seacombe and, um, of course, um, the very uh, uh, brilliant and very handsome Peter Sellers. And um, together they were a formidable Formidable, bloop, formidable force uh, for good during the during the 40s, and in English, in, in in English, of course they're in English, but they're in England itself. So you know, very much loved. And uh, he he had a like a, a, a wonderful connection. I think his mum moved out to to Australia. So he, he used to sort of pop in and out all the time. Um, but he's a very interesting um, comedian, very interesting man. You know, and as I said to you before, there's a lot of stuff about him. You just you can't put him in a box. You can't put baby in the corner, you know. It's like this guy, he could come up with anything because 
what's the rules of this surrealist sense of humor? Um, anything can happen, right? So humor is is a is is a release, but it's a it's like a uh, it's it's a lot of humor is based on the unlikely juxtaposition of of ideas, and by their juxtaposition, uh, and because they don't fit together, uh, having the, seeing them fit together in a sentence or in a skit or something, sort of um, establishes a novel. A novelty, and that novelty makes us laugh because we've ne- I've never seen that before, you know, type of thing, and um, we love that because you know what? It's apart from anything else, humor makes us feel so good, right? It makes us feel good. So if you're in a bad mood or on a bad day or something, you know, um, rather than you know trying to uh, um, increase that bad mood with some <laughs> some sad music or you know, angry rock or something, um, um, you know, listen to some, um, some humor and, and change your perspective. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a valuable, um, it's a very valuable gift and that these, these people have to help us, help humankind with comedy and laughter, humor, comedy and laughter. And, and, um, you know, and it's uh, that's that's hey, that's that's it. Ain't no more. That's it. It's funny. It's good, and uh, we like that that uh, release. We like that humor. Um, you know, it's a it's a very human response to laugh. Prove me wrong. It's a very very human response to laugh, and it makes us what we are. It makes us human and special. Our senses of humor, our sense of the absurd, our understanding and love of the absurd, of things that are not meant to be, you know, things that that break with convention. We hate convention. We hate conformity. No one likes conformity. Come on. Nobody likes conformity. Especially the word. The word conformity is conforming. Um, So... He had a very strong sense of of the absurd, and that led to, you know, uh, extraordinary feats, feats of 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 humour that um, people loved. You know, even till today, we can you can tune into him for the first time and and really understand and get his humour because. It's just there. It's, it's not. Uh, it doesn't have any pretense uh, or uh, or even structure. Sometimes, it's just free form, free form, and enjo- and you enjoy that uh, that uh, approach. You know, I certainly do. So, there you go. But then, you know, I love the Stooges as well. Uh, I, I'd like to do, um, tomorrow, I'd like to do Shemp, actually. Shemp is it's another, uh, where is he? There he is. It's my, he's the fourth Stooge. I want to talk to you about Shemp, but we'll talk about Shemp tomorrow. Uh, for now, we've got uh, one of the goons. I'm going to do the other goons, Harry and, um, and Peter, of course. Um, you know, they're... they're uh, Complete, they complete the picture here. They complete the picture uh, that I'm going for. I love, I love humor. I love comedy. And who doesn't? Let's face it, who doesn't? Um, so, makes us feel good. Makes us feel human. It's human to laugh. It's human to, to want to see the, the, the funny side of our lives and our suffering, you know. I mean, let's face it, we're all suffering at the moment with this uh, situation we find ourselves into. Let's not name it too much. Um, but uh, it, it's something that we, we're stuck in together. And uh, in many ways, this drawing experience is a way to make that uh, process more... Um, um, livable, I guess, more acceptable, perhaps, you know. 
We're going to have a long talk about eyes and irises and the textures within eyes, you know. So there's, um, there's a lot of stuff that we can, we can have a discourse about. We can, I can show you my thoughts on it and uh, you can share your thoughts on it and uh, we can together build a uh, knowledge base of things subjects that we can focus on and think about. So a lot of this stuff, you know, um, proportion and anatomy and stuff, you're thinking about constantly in the drawing process. So it's a very, um, it's, it can be very rewarding, you know, because I don't want you to think that I'm going through a shopping list of things, of things in my head. I'm not. I'm going through this completely ad hoc and sometimes I, fi I remember things, sometimes I forget things, you know, with regards to proportion and anatomy and physics and texture and blah, 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 you name it. It just, uh, it's, a, it's a process of investigation and sometimes you miss some um, crucial fingerprints that lead to a conviction. No, sometimes you miss things. You can't be... It's, you're not a robot. You're not a computer. You're not a camera. You know, cameras are very, very good at what they do. They capture detail and, and uh, things like that. And under the guide of, of a good photographer, you know, they can be themselves a form of art. And uh, that's great. That's fantastic. But it's really under control, under the the eye of somebody who does know about proportion and contrast and light and shade and modeling and, um, you know, a little bit of that that uh, we kind of build our relationship with in a drawing. Um, all of these sort of terms. It's kind of, I love this uh, velvety nature of the irises that, uh, that he's got here. Now I'm trying to get some of these di different uh, shiny and matte and light and dark areas um, around. Ooh, there's some nice differences shine on the cheekbones here, which is nice to get. Let's try and build that up. That's good. Uh, I don't want to go over too far into the temples because I'm conscious that we've got a light to contend with from above. So I'll be careful about any undue lighting that I could add just because I feel like it uh, doesn't mean I should do it. Have a think about it before you do it. A lot of these cases, I know, you know, drawing, you, you kind of get carried away and I'm getting carried away with this. I love this, the possibilities in the face of uh, Spike Milliken. This is a great subject. I love this subject. I hope you guys enjoy this as, as much as me. Um, I can't see how you could without, without drawing him. I challenge you to draw him. This would be a, a, a great subject. He's such a, such a, um, a beautiful human spirit. Uh, you know, it's just really, really um, uh, uh, an incredibly funny man and naturally funny and has a superb sense of the absurd. And, you know, who are we if, if not um, absurd <laughs> things, you know? Uh, have the guts to admit it and, and laugh, at your, laugh at yourself. So lots of textures. Look for the, uh, you know, shiny bits here and there. So look at the, the, the reference material or the model from life or whatever. And, and think about the textures and how you can draw that with a pencil, in this case a white pencil. So I'm trying to capture some of the reflective textures in the hair itself, you know, and the skin, try to build up slowly a, a little bit of relevance and truth in the fact that I'm dealing with uh, this area is shiny, this area is matte, uh, etc., etc. That noise you hear is just the rain. So 
So drawing is a, it's not really a rainy day activity. Um, it, anything could be a rainy day activity. It's raining, so you're inside and you're drawing. But, you know, it's not really that. It's, you can just as well draw outside in the sun. Um, it's not something like it's an either-or thing. It's something that, you, you know, you strike with it uh, at the moment. Because you, f- you feel it. You feel the drive to, to create something. I'm feeling a really strong impression to draw um, Spike Milligan. And I'm really enjoying the process of finding the forms in his face and the textures in his face. And I'm feeling the, the, the forms themselves creating a three-dimensional pencil drawing, which is, this is all it is. I mean, it's a pencil drawing. I'm going to use the black pencil. This kind of looks nice, isn't it? But um, I am going to use the black pencil. So it's been nice knowing your white pencil. Um, thanks for your... Uh, thanks for all your hard work, but I'm going to build up a little bit more contrast than I'm able to with this uh, this pencil here. So everything has a light and shade, you know, and uh, even the the areas that you don't sort of want to focus too much on, I guess, the, the, the background or the, the, you know, the shirt around it, the props and things. Everything has a light and dark quality to it. So you look at it and respond to it. Um, you know, don't go overboard. I wouldn't do too many, you know, unnecessary details, but uh, just enough to give it a little bit of um, three-dimensional properties that uh, I just I think add a little bit of truth to the thing and re- you know relevance relevance so it looks like a shirt yeah not just the outline all right well that's that's kind of nice I'm going to let me see if before I go into the black pencil I might just help out the highlights here and just to give me a little bit of a uneven playing field to in which to work on So the white Posca marker is actually helping establish a hierarchy within the whites. So within the white pencil, I'm just helping out here and there, just a little bit, to create a sense of drama within that uh, tonal range. So it's a nice um, little touch, I think. Um, Especially on highly reflective areas around the eyes, you know, the eyeballs themselves and maybe, you know, the skin um, around the eye perhaps can pick up a little bit of uh, moisture and and reflect the light. And that's really what you're trying to do is to create that sense of of, uh, reality, which is uh, based in a lot of times in the details of the... um, the, uh, lines and, 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 and objects, like little hairs and things like that, direction of such, you know, it could be uh, quite uh, quite a nice little touch, so it rains getting louder. So um, I will be getting around to doing the other goons. And uh, just to let you know, tomorrow I'd like to do ship. So (laughs) if you have any objection. um, Now's the time to speak up.
Champ, why don't you do Coily? I like Coily, but um, for some reason, I, I've taken a liking to Champ. He was sort of the first, uh, one of the first, um, in the first iteration of the Stooges and uh, in the last iteration of the Stooges. And of course he had a, a, a very promising um, single career on his own as well, which he explored. So, but more about that later, I think we won't go into that too much. So, okay, we've done the white, now we're going to do the black. I, I work differently, uh, apparently, in every, uh, every drawing, so now I'm going to lean on the white. Um, you know, I, I can sometimes jump in with the, the brown pencil and then the black pencil and then do the highlights uh, later. But in this case, I didn't. And there's no rhyme or reason for that. It's just that I felt that I've still got more form to play with. And you know what? I think I can. it'll make the, the black pencil part a little bit easier to uh, manage because now I've got the form, man, uh, the form in place. And to a certain extent, I think the likeness that I was trying to get. So I can now continue on with... Um, the knowledge that I'm playing with the contrast of the forms, a lot of these shapes. So trying to create a sense of um, uh, depth and sharp, sharpening up the a lot of these details a little bit. You can see how it works really s nicely and softly against the, the brown. So I've established already a warm feeling of flesh, of tone. And the black pencil then I'm just uh, using to darken those areas a little bit where I can, um, I feel that I can enhance the... Um, the drama, the drama of the drawing. So I'm not using the black uh, here very much at the moment for outlining things. I'm just clarifying a lot of the the darker elements in the drawing itself. You know, like the eyelashes and pupils are the first things I usually attack. I look at things that are. Uh, dramatically uh, different. Sometimes I'll put in a, a line, you know, areas that I regard as being quite important to outline. So it's not a uniform thing of uh, different things. And you respond differently, of course, you know, it's thick and thin here and there. The pencil gives you the ability to mimic a, a brush or a pen. In many cases, it's not as dark, of course, but you can, at a pinch, uh, create a thick and thin um, effect, which uh, can be helpful uh, to create that difference between the foreground and the background, for sure, and also other elements and things that you want to have, think, have you know, a, a contrasting tone. So the tone is uh, sometimes something you feel, something you see, um, but you know it can be an individual response, a very individual response. So don't look on it as a exactly a step-by-step -step process. It's something I f I think comes from uh, a sense of the you know the drama that you're trying to achieve, which is part of the story. Remember, the story is not just the story, the, 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 
the the um, uh, recognition of who it is, you know. Uh, and it's not even about the fact that it's human and you're drawing uh, human element, human shapes, and a human being and things like that. It's 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 a, a whole gamut of uh, things. The story, and of course, the artist himself is in the story because I'm not a filter. I'm not a camera. So I have a very unique uh, perspective on my choice of uh, style, technique, um, and going individually, my response to, you know, um, what I see and what I find uh, relevant in in this uh, story of the face. The face, the story of the face of Spike Milligan. What can it mean? So, outlining, no. Relevance, yes. It's a sort of a way of, um, you know, finding a balance between hard and soft and big and little and smooth and rough and you know, um, different surfaces, different things. You know, here's the hat, here's the head, here's the nose, etc. These are things that you think about. Should I outline this? Should I not? And it's really up to you as a response to whether or not you do that. But your response may change over time. You know, you may, you may find something um, that you think about, you know, maybe a little bit less black here, next time would be a good response and you kind of base it on your experience so there's a lot of an experiential uh, process to the drawing process so you know um, experimenting and discovery you never quite know whether things will work out Um, that's part of the journey that's part of the uh, experience itself there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with feeling that you know maybe uh, it's not going to work. But you know what? It's more a case of the journey itself as being the important element here, not so much the destination. It's great having a picture at the end. That's great. But, you know, uh, really for me, I'm very, very aware, self-aware of the strokes that I'm pushing down uh, on the paper and uh, not only what they mean, what they I'm, I'm, I'm trying to create meaning or create a meaning and a, a narrative. But you know, um, even that choice um, that I make between pressing hard and pressing light, and uh, it's a physical physicality of it, you know, that uh, is. It's there, let's face it, it's still physical drawing on a tablet, it's the same thing. But um, it's l- less responsive, I guess, in the pressure stakes, even though, you know, the pens respond to pressure. It's not like this pressure, this is a lot of pressure. This is thousands of PSI. Um, you wouldn't get that on an iPad screen. So um, no, it's it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of things, and I never uh, draw uh, conclusions that one is better than the other. It's a response, and one has, you know, it's the same response, really. Um, same amount of time. Nothing's really cheaper in terms of uh, time. Uh, or faster it doesn't it's not really that it's just a, a, a it's just another tool and um, it's not easier don't let people tell you it's easier it's not it's the same level of difficulty the difficulty is is um, the difficulty is always there but you know it's your response to the challenge and how you respond to um, 
you know, drawing with this pencil or that pencil or this program or this stylus or whatever. They're just, at the end of the day, they're just implements as more or less articulate uh, like this, more or less. Um, more articulate than a stick in the sand, but hey, Picasso used to do masterpieces with a stick and driftwood and sand and pebbles. So, you know, what's that say for expensive materials? Well, I, I favor these pencils over cheaper pencils, perhaps. These are about $3 each. Same with these Prisma colors. This is a Faber Castell Polychromo. Um, you know, materials kind of um, they're based on a lot of things like the workmanship of the of the artifact of the tool, also the pigment and what pigment it is. And some pigments are more expensive than others, and uh, some binders are more expensive than others, and you know, all of this stuff uh, factors into the price. But it's really something that um, you have to experience yourself. So when you buy materials, uh, you know, always try to trial them out, try them out before you leave the store because they might not be the right thing for you. You might find something else. So... You can't really do that in a restaurant, can you, or a grocery store? Is it? Well, I don't know if this avocado will taste good. I can't sort of give it a taste test. So, um, I wonder what I should do with the the background. I might just put in the black. I think uh, to build up a contrast, so just a level of contrast between the foreground and the the the, the background itself. You know, so usually with a, if I was working with a pen or something like that, I tend to stay away from the contour line. See the thick and thin that I've gotten here with the, uh, the pencil line. I tend to stay a little bit away from the uh, line by giving a little bit of air, a little bit of breathing space between it. Um, just because if you go right up to the line, you'll lose that thick and thin quality. It just becomes black. So, um, yeah, it's it's a way of making it uh, making it work and uh, not losing that uh, precious quality of um, line thickness. So this is the cutting in process. Um, I usually, if I was at my desk, I'd, I'd be turning this this sucker around uh, so that I can work on any any part of the um, the background all at once <laughs> without the fear of my hand smudging it. Actually, I might use the um, I might use the paper to rest my hand on so I don't lift pigment from the um, from the paper so this is this is uh, like a fun exercise of cutting in it's kind of making it look like it's cut out uh, in many respects but it respects the contour line which is the outline of the, uh, the character which I kind of like to leave um, in violet, like not changed very much at all, if I can help it. Um, and you know, like cutting into these little fine details of hair, it's kind of fun, uh, to be honest, because it gives it a, uh, a chunkier effect, a chunkier look and feel. Um, 
which you can't, you know, it's very dramatic. It's, you can't really get that level of drama just with a, a white pencil. So just cutting around it like this is kind of nice. So why, you might ask, why bother? Why are you doing the background? Why are you doing a black background? You know, what, why do any background? Um, well, you don't have to. I'm not doing it because I have to do it. I'm doing it because I feel that, um, you know, I can have something that's pretty in this sort of lace detail around the hair and the fact that I'm having, um, you know, Spike's head stand out more from the grey background uh, is a bonus, is a very good, uh, strong way of um, imposing uh, contrast. And also, you know, that I've got this frame uh, device that I'm using and that kind of creates a sense of composition and uh, you're, you're enhancing the compositional element by creating this um, um, negative space with the black. Okay, so you get a different effect, obviously, with a white pen. You can do that. I've done that uh, before. I think I did that yesterday. But, you know, sometimes you just want to mix it up, right? Just have a different thing. You can use a color, if you wish. Uh, Posca actually make opaque um, uh, paint markers, which I use for the white over here and there. Um, I might try to do that next time. That might be a, a good thing to experiment with. This is a, a, like a squeezable handle on this uh, this brush pen. It's a Zig uh, brush pen, and it's going a bit dry now because the um, I'm running at the, I think, low on ink. Um, so it's giving me a sort of a dry brush effect, unwarranted, unasked for, uh, but that's okay. We'll live with it. So, um, yeah, the, uh, the black is actually quite a good um, dramatic uh, element. I've used it a lot of, for a lot of my illustrations. And uh, I love the fact that it uh, highlights the, um, the contour. So staying away from the line makes the contour stand out. So it's almost like a double uh, impression double exposure almost, like there's a fringe quality to it and, you know, almost like a cutout quality to it that looks uh, very much um, separate from the background, cuts the, the foreground out quite successfully from the background. So we're nearly there now, nearly there, don't worry. Um, come on, pen, work with me. And uh, I like these, this particular brush pen because it doesn't get shiny if the pigment pools, which a lot of pens do, and especially in the days of Indian ink when we used to use Indian ink with brush or pen. But if you put too much ink on, it would pool. It would create a shiny element, um, which probably stands out too much. So nearly there, folks. Last little bit. Here we go. S P I K E. Yeah. So I can't think of anything else. I might um, put a bit of shine over here, maybe a little bit over there. But, you know, it's sort of uh, not that necessary, really. Um, I'm just gilding the lily here. <laughs> so um, there we go. That's my take on Spike Milligan. And um, this is uh, Franz Cantor. And uh, I will catch you on the flip side.
Bye-bye. <laughs>